Hello everyone, welcome back to Video Notes for Geometry. We will be talking about Lesson 7.5 using proportional relationships. Once again, your objectives here are to use ratios and make to make indirect measurements. Remember that indirect measurements are uh, measuring um, different values without using specific measuring tools like rulers, protractors, things like that. We'll be using the math behind different uh, relationships to find those measurements. We will also be using scale drawings to solve problems. The vocab discussed in this lesson will be indirect measurement, scale drawing, and scale. An indirect measurement is any method that uses formulas, similar figures, and or proportions to measure an object. The following examples show one indirect measurement technique. Whenever dimensions are given in both feet and inches, you must convert them to either feet or inches before doing any calculations. And here's what we mean. You'll see these measurements given here in this example one are in feet and inches. The normal way we give our height measurement is with feet and inches. Rather than 5.75 feet, we would say uh, 5 feet 9 inches. So let's keep that in mind as we do example one. Tyler wants to find the height of a telephone pole. He measured the pole's shadow and his own shadow and ma then made a diagram. Well, let's look at the diagram. We have Tyler that is 5 feet 9 inches and we have his shadow length that is 7 feet 8 inches. We have a right triangle created by Tyler and his shadow length assuming we're on level ground with the pole. The pole casts a shadow that's 38 feet 4 inches. We need to find H, the height of the pole in a feet and inches measurement, but first we need to have all of these converted into either just feet or just inches. It's easier to convert everything to just inches, that way we don't deal with decimals. So our first step is to make that conversion. A, B, Tyler's shadow, 7 feet 8 inches. We're going to take 7 times 12, 12 inches in a foot, and then add 8. So Tyler's shadow measures 92 inches. BC, Tyler's own height, 5 feet 9 inches, 5 times 12 plus 9 inches gives us 69 inches. And then we're going to also convert the shadow length for the pole, 38 feet 4 inches becomes 460 inches. 12 times 38 plus 4 is 460. So we will use these values to set up our proportion. So we're going to notice that these are similar triangles because of this. Because the sun's rays are parallel at any given time, angles A and F are congruent, so these triangles are congruent by angle-angle similarity. Now, in work that you would have to do in, uh, in your homework or on a test, you don't have to say this part. This is just a reminder as to why we can set up a proportion. All right, so to find H, we're going to set up this proportion. Corresponding sides are proportional. So BC over GH would have to equal AB over FG. So we're going to fill in what we know. BC is 69 inches. H is what we're looking for for GH. 92 inches replaces AB, and 460 inches replaces FG. Remember, we converted these to their numbers in inches. The cross product property says that 69 times 460 must equal 92 times H. We've been working with proportions enough now that after you've gotten it to this point you should be able to find out what H is on your own. So take a minute to pause the video if you need more time otherwise we will go ahead and proceed. Alright, when we solve this simplifying this multiplication first we're going to divide both sides by 92 and realize that H is 345 inches. Now that is not going to be our final answer. We are going to convert that back to feet and inches. The height H of the pole is 345 inches. We're going to divide that by 12 to get 28 feet, and that decimal that we get is 28.75. That .75 is not 8 inches, we don't round that up to 8 inches, that 0.75 is a percentage of a foot. Well, that's 75 percent of a foot, or 3 fourths of a foot. Well, we'd have to know what 3 fourths of a foot is. 3 fourths of a foot is 9 inches. So our answer is 28 feet 9 inches for the height of the pole. All right. 
Our next term, a scale drawing, is defined as a scale drawing represents an object as smaller than or larger than its actual size. The drawing's scale is the ratio of any length in the drawing to the corresponding actual length. For example, on a map with a scale of 1 centimeter to 1500 meters, or 1500 meters, 1 centimeter on the map represents 1500 meters in actual distance. Remember, a proportion may compare measurements that have different units. It's okay, the units don't have to be converted when we're doing scale drawings. So here's our first example about a scale drawing. A Wisconsin road map. A road map is one example of a scale drawing. On a Wisconsin road map, Kristen measured a distance of 11 and 1 8 inches from Madison to Wausau. The scale of this map is 1 inch to 13 miles. That means every 1 inch on the map represents 13 miles of actual distance. What is the actual distance between Madison and Wausau to the nearest mile? Well, here's what we're going to do. To find the actual distance x, we're going to write a proportion comparing the map distance to the actual distance. Each ratio will compare a map distance to the actual distance. So the map distance of 11 and 1 8 inches over the actual distance x has to be the same as the scale 1 inch to 13 miles in actual distance. So again, we're going to multiply our cross products. 11 and 1 8 times 13 must equal x times 1. Or 1 times x must equal 11 and 1 8 times 13. Once again, go ahead and multiply these out. Now this could be a little bit tricky to put into your calculator if you're not familiar with it. 11 and 1 8 you can convert to a decimal by just taking 1 divided by 8 and adding 11. When you do that, you get 11.125. So writing this as a decimal makes it a little bit easier to work with. 11.125 times 13 is 144.625. So x is approximately 145 when we round to the nearest mile. The actual distance is about 145 miles when we round to the nearest mile. All right, let's take a look at example three, scale drawings. Again, Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, holds a tablet in her left hand. The tablet is 7.19 meters long and 4.14 meters wide. If you made a scale drawing of that tablet using the scale one centimeter to 0.75 meters, what would be the dimensions to the nearest tenth? Again, we're asking for the scale drawing dimensions. We are given the actual dimensions of 7.19 meters long and 4.14 meters wide. We need to do a proportion to find each dimension. So we'll be doing two different proportion problems. Set up our proportions to find the length and width of the scale drawing. So first we're going to set up our proportion to find length. The scale drawing length over the actual length must equal that scale of 1 to 0 0.75. So when we cross multiply here, 0.75L equals 7.19. Now we divide by 0.75 on both sides, and L is approximately 9.6 centimeters when we round to the nearest tenth. So the length of our drawing is about 9.6 centimeters. Now we're going to set up a similar proportion to find W. W, the scale drawing width, over the actual width of 4.14, must equal that same scale, 1 over 0 0.75. Cross multiply again and then solve for w by dividing both sides by 0.75 and the width would be approximately 5.5 centimeters. So our scale drawing would look something like this. Our rectangle that's about 9.6 centimeters long and 5.5 centimeters wide. Alright, we have one theorem in this lesson in which we need to discuss. Proportional perimeters and areas theorem. If the similarity ratio of two similar figures is A to B, or whatever the similarity ratio actually ends up being, the ratio of their perimeters is going to be the same, A over B. The ratio of their areas is going to be A squared over B squared, because area is a square unit's measurement. Area is two-dimensional. Or we could just call it A over B all squared 
Either way you write it, either squaring the top and bottom separately or squaring it all together like this, means the same thing. So if I know the similarity ratio between two figures, the ratio of their perimeters is going to be the same. The ratio of their areas is going to take that A over B and square it. So here's our examples I've drawn out for you. We are given that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. That similarity ratio, AB over DE, would be 5 to 10. That's going to be the same as 4 to 8, which would be the same as 3 to 6. Those are all in 1 to 2 ratio. So the perimeter ratio would also be the same. You can test this by adding all three sides of ABC and getting 12, and adding all three sides of DEF and getting 24. 12 over 24 is also 1 half. The area ratios are going to be different, though. If I find the area of triangle ABC, we do 1 half base times height. Base of 3 times height of 4 is 12. Half of that is 6. So the area of triangle ABC is 6. The area of triangle DEF, we do half of base times height. 6 times 8 is 48. Half of that is 24. Our ratio of 6 over 24 simplifies to 1 fourth, which is our other ratio squared. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So let's take a look at example 4. Given that triangle LMN is similar to triangle QRT, that's a typo, that is supposed to be the similar symbol, find the perimeter and area of triangle QRS. So here's how this problem works. We are given these triangles are similar. The similarity ratio compares corresponding sides. LM corresponds to RQ, so the similarity ratio is 13 to 9.1. And we can leave it written that way. We don't have to rewrite it as a proper fraction. We can leave it written like that. The perimeter ratio is going to be the same, so to find the new perimeter, I'm going to use this ratio. The area ratio will be 13 over 9.1 squared. So to find the new area, I'm going to use this ratio, 13 over 9.1 all squared, which, remember, we can square the top and the bottom separately. So first, let's find the perimeter. We're going to set up the proportion that 36 over our unknown perimeter P must equal 13 over 9.1. 36 over P must equal 13 over 9.1. I'm going to give you a moment to solve this. Remember, cross multiply and then solve for p, and you figure out what you get from there. Pause the video if you need more time. All right, we should get something like this. 13p equals 36 times 9.1, so p is 25.2. Now let's find the area. We're going to use 60 as the given area of the first triangle over our unknown area A of the second triangle, we're going to set that equal to the area ratio, 13 over 9.1 all squared, which means we're going to square 13 and 9.1 separately before we cross multiply. When we do that, we get 13 squared times that area equals 9.1 squared times 60. Or, if I go ahead and square these two numbers first, it would look something like this. 169a equals 82.81 times 60. So we're going to multiply these two, then divide by 169, and find out that our area is 29.4 square centimeters. The perimeter is just measured in centimeters. So the perimeter of triangle QRS is 25.2 centimeters, and the area is 29.4 square centimeters. That concludes our video for Lesson 7-5. Hopefully this has been helpful. We will do more work in class, and I have also attached the assignment in case you want to get a head start.